this is where I want the LEDs to be sitting. Firstly, buy one of these kits. Remove the circuit board. Remember which side is left and which is right. If you mix this up, you'll need to wire the transmitter differently. Mark out which bits of the board can be cut off. I needed these parts removed to fit my helmet. I used the ribbon cable from a printer, which now doesn't work. Mark where you want the LEDs to sit. Find surface mount LEDs. We only want the LEDs and not the resistors. Attach wires, smaller wires will work better. As you can see the LEDs are tiny. Scrape through the ribbon cable with a scalpel. Solder the LEDs onto the correct tracks. We we'll use a cardboard template to work out where the PCB will mount. I cut thick aluminium plates so the board will not bend or break. I decided this ribbon cable connector would come in handy. This will allow the cable to join to the LEDs. This micro switch will also come in handy. The helmet inner lining is removed. We mix up some SR Ivalin dental acrylic. We set the micro switch into the helmet. The cling wrap allows the set acrylic to be removed. This is the custom shape of the helmet. We use some double sided tape to mount it. We stick the micro switch into the helmet. We wire the switch so that the battery power is on when the switch activates. This is where the board will sit. We use fine wire to join the board to the ribbon connector. Double sided tape insulates the board and attaches it to the metal plate. The front red LED shows the rider when the brake comes on. The helmet's so well made that wiring is difficult. There are no real gaps on this quality helmet. The red and white wires are there to the front LEDs. I sew some Velcro to the inner helmet lining. I use a continuous red 3O cotton suture. This should heal nicely. Velcro is glued to the underside of the metal plate. This will allow the plate to stay in place. The Velcro can stick to the helmet lining but would cause damage. The lead array is all finished. We make this T-piece so the signals can come from the board. We solder the connections to the corresponding tracks. We test with a fine probe multimeter. We look for shorts. I've got a pair on at the moment. The main strip only has four tracks, but there are three cut in the middle to make seven tracks. We place the lead array onto the helmet. We cling wrap again to protect the board and the helmet. More SR Ivalin dental acrylic. We mold the acrylic dough over the circuit board. This sets in about five minutes because we want to hide the electronics. It's just molded with the fingers. Okay, now it's all set. Take it off. We could paint it, but it would look a bit dodgy. So we get some black vinyl and we stick it on with some Sikaflex. Use plenty of clamps until it sets. I oh, like to use these quick connectors to wire the transmitter. We wire directly to the bike, running light, brake and indicators. The quick connect allows me to take that off and put on my other helmet, which has LEDs. The front indicator LEDs are positioned to clear the internal visor. They help you to remember when you have your blinkers on too. The red LED is only just visible by the rider and shows the brake is operational. The front indicators can only just be seen by the rider from the corner of their eyes. The LEDs are obviously a lot more visible at night. I had to go back and change the orange rear LEDs to the brighter ones. The Jibby top box here is wired with LEDs as well. From the front you can see the red brake indicator on the helmet. This shows micro switch turning on the helmet when it's placed down. 
The black strips are automotive vinyl wrap. The LEDs are wrapped over with clear vinyl wrap, so rain will not damage the sealed LEDs. Thanks for watching.